Welcome guys to the first ever Slick Gorilla podcast. We've had this in the pipeline for a long, long, long time and it's finally come to fruition. Uh, we've got our very first guest in the studio sitting next to me. Hey everyone. Uh, it's Mr. Joel Ezekiel. How are you doing? I'm good, man. And yourself? Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, like I said, had this in pipeline for a long time. You're a busy man, uh, but we wanted to get you down as the first guest. And for sure. I feel, I feel honoured, man. You caught me on my last couple of days in London, so. Exactly. We'll get into that. Um, but for those who don't know, Joel is a barber um, and he's also what I would call a content creator. Would that for be sure. right? Yeah, yeah. So He's a content man. creator. He's got a very interesting story of the things he's been doing in the UK and in the US. Um, so, Joel, give us a little bit of a breakdown about yourself. Uh, a breakdown of myself. So I started working in a barber's at about the age of 12 or 13. I wanted to earn money and my parents unfortunately wouldn't give me a penny. So I ended up sweeping Standard. the floor <laughs> at, <laughs> at a barber's and uh, I learned how to cut hair a little bit there, just sort of like basic fading technique. But I mainly was there just to earn some cash as a, as a young kid. Uh, fast forward, I would say 10 years, I ended up working in commercial real estate. Okay. Uh, or commercial property, residential property. Doing I noticed the real estate. I wonder real, why you said American. That. I've spent too much yeah. time in America, man. We'll get to that one. <laughs> <laughs> so property, commercial property, residential property, lettings and sales. And then I moved on to like senior lettings and sales as well. Uh, selling like houses in Hampstead, Primrose Hill, like just really expensive houses, basically. Okay. And then I became a mortgage broker after I left that. So I've pretty much done everything within the property side of Been things. around the block on that side. I think it's good to try stuff. Yeah. I, I think I missed a bit where I had maybe like six or seven retail jobs before I got into property. I've been there. Yeah, we've... I think we've all been there, to be honest. Everyone's done retail. I think it's important for everyone to do retail. I think if you do retail when you're young, it sets yeah. you up as a grafter for the rest of your life. Oh, there's a... I would say there's a... We, I live near Brent Cross, which is in North okay. London. Yeah, yeah. And the type of people that you get there is a... It, it, it grounds you as a Anybody person. Anybody and sure. all sorts, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I remember I was working in retail. I used to get those sorts that used to just come in for no reason, but to just waste your time. Oh, a million percent. Uh, yeah, I remember back in the good old days, you used to rack my brain like, what's wrong with these people? <laughs> uh, literally. But yeah, I think we've all been through that retail stage. Yeah, uh, definitely, man. We give you a good setup. Yeah, I think it, it grounds you and it gives you good structure as a person on how to deal with people. Obviously, I was in a sales job for a long time. And then mortgages, again, is sales, people trusting you, being a people's person. I think from a very young age, I've always been a people person. Like, it doesn't matter which background that you're from. I've always liked being around different type of people, seeing their culture, learning from them. And uh, after my mortgage broker career, I uh, ended up leaving it because I didn't feel fulfilled. I was earning sort of like six, almost seven figures at a really young wow. age. Okay. But... I got to the point where even though I was earning loads of cash, I was miserable and I sort of was like 20, between 21 and 22. I was like, surely there there is something missing here okay. to not feel fulfilled, even with the nice watches, the nice cars. So I ended up leaving my job. I booked a one-way ticket to Cambodia to go and travel right, and whoa, meet whoa, whoa. people. Cambodia. Yeah, yeah right. Cambodia. That needs some explanation because that's, I was expecting a one-way ticket to like LA or maybe Australia. Sure. Cambodia. So yeah, I had I had some savings saved up and I just, I was like, you know what? I've been to Thailand a couple of times. I've been to the States quite a few times. I was like, where's somewhere I haven't been? Okay. Um, but lo and behold, the day I was supposed to travel, COVID hit. Oh, and uh, my flight. Dreaded got, C word. Yeah, man, my my flight got cancelled during that time, and then I had to sort of figure out because I didn't want to get back into property because I was miserable, and obviously the property industry, as I'm sure loads of people's lo lost their jobs. Blitz. I couldn't do anything, so I had to sort of sit and figure out what I was going to do, and within that two year period is where I came up with this american challenge where i started hustling and working i ended up working for dpd and amazon okay. 17 hour days Whoa. to save as much cash as possible for Whoa. this next trip and then uh, i came up with the trip which we'll go into in a little bit and then that's how i ended up getting here and in that interim of the last six months before i started i retrained as a barber okay. with menswire academy right so trained by Sean Shout Moore. Out, men's player. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so Josh LaMonica, uh, Gianni Cardinali and Sean Moore were the okay. three people that, and, and Janelle Mensah. Some, but he uh, does some good, good barbers there. Very good barbers. I've, I've been fortunate enough to be trained by some great people, some really knowledgeable people. And uh, once I retrained, I then started creating my trip, which is called Cutting Through America. Cutting Through America, exactly. So just to break down how Joel got here. I think I was the one that noticed you on TikTok. 
So as we all do, we just kind of float across TikTok. We end up spending about an hour on there, yeah. just watching different <laughs> stuff. And then you, you stumble across different stuff. Some of it's absolute crap, mm -hmm. um, but some of it you think, oh, okay, well, this is interesting. And obviously your content kind of had that effect on me. Awesome, um, so appreciate I it. I passed it on to our marketing manager um, and I think he reached out to you um, and then set it up. So yeah, it was initially that kind of more shock like content, natural raw footage that sure. kind of hooked me in. Um, and then the fact that you were British out in America, I was yeah. like, huh? Because um, <laughs> obviously I think most people who are, who have looked at TikTok have seen Vic Blends, obviously. Uh, listen, I, I rate Vic a lot. Yeah, yeah. I know you do mention, we met before and you told me that he's, he seems like a really cool guy. Vic, uh, he's down to earth, man. I know, uh, Jesus is a big thing in America and he's yeah. very in touch with his spirituality and, and God. And I think people resonate with that. Mm -hmm. Gives him something to look forward to. Plus he, he really does like to give back to people. And I think the person that you see in the videos is the, per I haven't met him personally, but I think it is the person that you'd meet him personally. Yeah. And it's sort of like when people meet me in person and obviously it's, it's kind of nice when someone recognizes you from one of your videos, but yeah. I hear the same thing that I am that same person in the videos as I am in person. And I think that's so important about content creation just to be genuinely 100% yeah, yourself. Yeah, I think it's being pure and being genuine, like you just said, and authentic. I think nowadays, because we're consuming so much content, it's, for me, it's quite clear when it's not authentic. 100%. Versus when it is, when stuff is super staged versus when it's supernatural. Mm -hmm. um, there's a big divide there. Um, so yeah, get give us a breakdown over what the kind of whole America road trip sure. exactly means. So after I got, I got backtrack to Cambodia a little bit, I wanted to travel in Cambodia and I wanted to film and do content creation there. But there's a lot, the, the market is very saturated for content creation. And yeah. I think... There are many good content creators, but there's no one that's got a really old niche that makes their life sort of difficult when they're traveling. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was myself and my cousin that came up with the uh, idea. I love motorbikes, I love traveling. And I was like, where, where on earth could I go that I could basically cross a border and it's like a different country? And where could I go where I could buy a motorbike or a motorcycle yeah. and travel? And lo and behold, we came up with America. And I was like, the idea sort of came, what if I could only leave a state after I've cut someone's hair for like food, accommodation and a landmark location? I was like, how crazy would it be if someone cut someone's hair outside the lighthouse, the White House? Yeah. And then from that, that's where the that's cutting. Spawned. Yeah, that's where the cutting through America trip, uh, cutting through America trip happened in that whole plan. And it was it was, took me about two years to plan for that trip if for a, the correct visa to make sure I had enough saving because America's not like Europe. They're not built totally in different. terms of trains and, and yeah. the infrastructure. infrastructure. You need a vehicle. Yeah, um, you literally, you literally do. Oh yeah. <laughs> Walking pretty much, doesn't it? Well, we saw you guys in LA and you to get anywhere, even though it looks close, yeah. it's half an hour ride, four and a, four or five hour walk. I, yeah, but yeah, coming to america big big challenge big massive plan it was 50 states to travel all 50 states to use my skill as a professional barber to help me get around whether that would be cutting hair for accommodation cutting yeah. hair for food and cutting hair in a landmark site i will, will say americans are actually a lot friendlier than i expected mm -hmm. going up to random people in the uk asking them if they want a free haircut they're very sort of good luck <laughs> yeah they sort of look at you and say listen to me i, I don't i don't want you to touch my hair and especially i I think the, no offense to a lot of American barbers, there are some good ones. The skill level that we have in the UK is very different to the US. They're sort mm. of, it's like a free for all. So even though they have to get a license, they're not really trained the proper way on how to section hair, on how to correctly cut hair. Most of the male barbers that I've met in the UK, they're trained. detail here, I think. Well, they're trained on how to cut women's hair. Okay. And the same way you like section and stuff is how you do men's hair. And I think that's what makes British barbers so popular. That's why a lot of our events go to Excel in London. Yeah. It's because we have a different level of class here. Not to say that aren't American, American barbers that aren't good, but I think there's a lot of British barbers that are, are really good. Yeah, obviously you know a lot more about barbering than me. I'm not a barber, <laughs> so I can't really speak on that and I won't even try to be yeah, honest. Yeah. Um, for those that don't know, I work for Slick Gorilla as pretty much the head of operations, so pretty much the brains behind the brand. Um, so everything that you see out there, I've had kind of a big involvement with um, and we've got a lot of big things coming as well. Um, but yeah, barbering, obviously specialist, but you are putting yourself at risk. Yeah, of course. America's America's a very strange place in the sense you're not sure what you're going to expect. Exactly. And I think the whole premise of the trip was to use that skill as a barber to help me get around. I've done, I'm about a month ahead of what's being released on my YouTube, but I, I would say I'm on state 38 at the moment. 
and uh, I've pretty much in most of them I've used my skill mm-hmm. to help me get around in total I've spent about six hundred dollars on accommodation in the 38 I mean, states 38 that I've done. states I don't know what the maths is on that, but that's it's pretty quite, good. That's going. good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Don't get me wrong. I, I've I bought a tent and stuff, so there's been a couple of days where I've camped outside. Yeah. I think if I just, as much as I have the access to be able to buy a hotel everywhere, it wouldn't make the trip exciting. It wouldn't make people wanting to watch my video to be like, okay, yeah. well, where is Joel today? And uh, I, I used it. the The main premise was not so much getting free accommodation or free food, but going to each state and going to one of their landmark locations and cutting hair outside yeah. of it. So one of the most recent ones that I did was I was in South Dakota by Mount Rushmore. Okay. I did a couple of haircuts That's there. That's with the carved clips, Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's a lot smaller in person. It looks massive from the movies. It looks huge. It's tiny. Okay. Okay. It's super, super small. They, they tend to do that in America. They pull a lot of tricks out of the bag in those movies. Oh, 100%. <laughs> well, you know, when you see Mount Rushmore, it looks massive. Yeah. And then when I went there, I was like, well, uh, this is a bit anticlimactic. Like, it's oh, tiny. Yeah, okay. But yeah. This is nothing like the pyramids then. No, no I, that is one place I would love. It's a wacky idea, but I'd love to do a haircut on top of the pyramids. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> good luck with that. Um, one day, one day soon. Let me know how it goes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to it. But yeah, so you've done 38 states. Obviously... Yeah. When you kind of landed in America, do you not think, you know, what have I got myself into? So I, I feel like I'm a very, it's not spur of the moment type of guy, but I originally flew into LA. Mm-hmm. Um, I have family in LA, so I had sent all my motorbike stuff and right. all I had ski gear as well because I want to go skiing after this trip. But I had dropped my stuff there and then I spent about four or five days uh, acclimatizing to the, yeah. the time zone, which knocked me out. And then from there I flew to Boston. From Boston, I got a coach to Maine, which was my first state. So I started on the right side and I was making my way down. Okay. And I was like, yeah, Boston's a bit cold. Bearing in mind, I got there be- beginning of February, pretty much the end of Jan. So it wasn't summer. It was and a bit was, chilly. Um, you could say it was pretty cold. <laughs> so I got on the coach and as I'm on the coach, I'm just looking. I can start to see the snow forming. And bearing in mind at this time, you obviously saw me in LA when I had my motorbike. Yeah. But I had a massive rucksack with all my camera gear, all my barber bag and like seven, eight pretty days worth like of clothes. Backpack mode. Yeah. Point. And it was heavy. The thing weighs like 50 kilos. Wow. And uh, I got off the coach. There was literally snow. And I think in that moment right there. You fall. I was like, oh my God, what have I got myself into? Did you fall? <laughs> I didn't fall. I, I think my my nerves, and I don't really get nervous, but my nerves hit me right then. Like, how am I going to get through this? Yeah. And it just so happens. The, the trip started off really well. I met, someone saw me with my camera rig because I've got obviously a big vlogging camera rig. Mm-hmm. And he was a U, uh, college student and his name was Kyle. He was like, bro, why don't you come stay with me in a couple of days? Took my Instagram. So the trip oh, really? already, the, the trip started off well, albeit I got stuck in Bar Harbor in Maine for two days because I missed the coach. Right. Um, and then from there, the first the first six states I did by public transport. And then I flew to Miami to get my motorbike and then obviously yeah. started traveling. Which I, I've seen. I did like that bike. It's pretty big, huh? I'm yeah. a little lad, but it's uh, I do well. I've dropped it many times. Yeah. I've got some so I had in my head, I was wounds. like, what's he going to be? driving around on if crossing the whole of america so i didn't know what to anticipate but when i seen it i was like oh okay yeah this makes this yeah. makes sense now. i was i was nervous when i landed and i i wasn't nervous when i got to la i was really confident yeah i think once i had started the process i think it was when i got to miami that i really found my flow mm-hmm. and i'm not going to mention what i'm going to do for the next 12 states but we're going to make the next 12 because i've got six months to finish them okay. even more challenging to uh to entice people like i'm going to make it as difficult as possible to get through those last 12 states okay i look forward to seeing it all what do you think's been kind of the best state so far for you in the us it depends are you talking about like scenery or just what i've personally enjoyed the most yeah probably personally to you kind of where you're thinking okay i really want to go back there as soon as possible. okay so i've been to miami once before this yeah. is the second time i've been to miami i loved miami i think it is very it's sort of like a spanish dominican american vibe and uh, i loved california those are two places that i could see myself living in i think miami because i was there for almost four or five weeks okay that's a good the food, time. yeah the food is great I love I'm, I'm a big fan of the hot weather like today it's raining outside in London and it was just been like 30 degrees so hot weather food hot, hot weather I good looking be. good looking girls yeah, man I'm not, even, I, I'm not even gonna lie there you yeah, <laughs> loads of Spanish girls there man yeah and uh, the people are very friendly I, and I luckily I know a couple of people in Miami that are into fitness I'm big into my fitness albeit I've lost a lot of weight since being in America okay 
bit backwards, right? You think I might put yeah, on weight in the America. Opposite. I've got a fast metabolism. I'm very blessed. If you say so, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but Miami, I love just because of the culture, the people. And it's sort of like not really America. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever been to Miami. I've been a f more than a few times. Yeah. I've spent a bit of time It's kind of weird, right? Mean. It's yeah. like America, but it's not. It's like yeah. not like the main states of America. And I think I had a great time there because I spent so much time. I love the heat. I love the people. Yeah. To be and honest, it's one of my favorite cities in the world. It's cool. I've studied the whole kind of the history and all the Latin America influence and when people came up from like Cuba and stuff like Everyone that. Everyone speaks Spanish there, there's a big, much. Yeah, everybody speaks Spanish, but there's a massive history as well, kind of the whole mm -hmm. crime in the 90s. There's a lot of documentaries out there. Um, I won't mention the names because they're a bit naughty, um, <laughs> but you can imagine where I'm coming from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So it does have that vibe. Um, so apart from Miami, uh, where would you say that surprised you the most that you went to? So where surprised me? Alabama surprised me. Okay. Because for some reason, I got this view that Alabama's really flat and there's loads of like crazy Americans there. That's the word I'm going to use. Crazy Americans. Crazy Americans. Yeah. And actually, it was really beautiful. It was really hilly. It okay. was lots of like, ma not mountains, but really big hills. The people that I stayed with, like gave me some amazing Southern hospitality. Yeah. I went to my first like gospel church. It was like sister act. It was actually really funny. That whole proper singing. Oh, dancing. they were proper singing like, and it was a proper like, it was like an event, like a concert. Yeah, I think they take it seriously there. Oh, big time. They're, they're big into the, the church there. I think Idaho, um, which is where I was recently, mm -hmm. surprised me. So I met, met someone on a Facebook group, his name is John. And he's, cause I have a motorbike, I have a helmet called Rurock. And there's a big community of Rurock of Rurock people that wear the helmet. Cause the they're very Rurok cool helmets. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever heard of them? <laughs> Never. So I'll show you a picture <laughs> after, but they're a helmet group. And he basically messaged me when I was in Miami and I'd put a picture saying I'm on state seven, okay. blah, blah. And he messaged me saying, oh, you can come with me. He's a, he's an anesthesiologist, which is the dude that puts you to sleep. To sleep. Yeah. Right, do you trust this dude? Yeah, no, no, he was cool. <laughs> so, I, so I had just ridden 14 hours after I'd met you guys from LA to Idaho. Yeah. And he lived in the middle of nowhere. Um, in Idaho Falls, but he was right in between the Glacier Springs, Yellowstone and Jackson, which is in Wyoming. Okay. And I, because I thought there was nothing there, he took me around everywhere. He also rides loads of bikes. So I got to ride all of his super bikes around um, Idaho. And just that experience, I made a really great friend from that trip, all from some guy that owned yeah. the same helmet Friendly, as me. Friendly, right? Yeah, yeah. They're very friendly. You would never get that in the UK. I guess people you know, they're interested in what you're doing as well. So I think that pushes them to be a bit like, all right, let me reach yeah, out. Yeah, and I give a haircut to everyone as well. But yeah. like he introduced me. What happened on that trip is after the first day I went riding, my chain got caught in my motorbike and okay. I, I actually had like a bad road rash. The one day I didn't have really? a, my jacket on and I was only supposed to be with him for a day or two. And I ended up staying with him for a week and a half while okay. my bike was getting fixed. Just the sheer hospitality of this person that had never met me, like we still speak to this day and I made a good friend from him and it's, and it's really beautiful Idaho because you're connecting onto Montana, yeah. which is unbelievably beautiful and Imagine Wyoming. The landscapes are just unreal. Yeah, most I think I've got a new appreciation for how big America is because from one state to another, especially coming towards California that yeah. way, it is literally like riding from the bottom of the UK to Scotland yeah. and there's nothing there. There's no, there's just ga ga petrol stations. There's lit and, and just empty land. Space. Li yeah. that, that's what it comes no, down we to. We drove from um, Las Vegas to LA uh, and then we saw it and that's not even a big drive in terms like of America. Three, three, four hours? Yeah. It's pretty hot like there. Four though. hours. Oh yeah, it was 110 degrees. It was, <laughs> it was absolute madness um you could literally feel the hot air in your mouth yeah, yeah. is that being in a sauna literally uh, i'll never forget that feeling um but america is huge obviously we do a lot of businesses there sure. um thankfully that our brand is really getting a lot of traction in america mm. um so i i speak to a lot of people in america on a daily basis and they're all so different you have to treat people in a different way communicate in different styles um so america is quite unique uh, very, it's country. very. We speak a different language. I'll never everywhere that I go without fail. I've still got a very strong British accent. But when I go to um, any like restaurant, I say, "Can I have a bottle of water?" They're like, "Look at me!" Like, and then I have to what say, "What you say?" <laughs> yeah, and then I have to go. Can I have a bottle of water? And they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, no yeah, problem." Yeah, because like, yeah. I remember just things. earlier about fifty minutes ago when you said real estate, I just almost started. Yeah, laughing. <laughs> I was I've like, spent so much time. What are you now? about real estate? Because I say, I say, to someone, "Where's the bin?" And they look at me like, "What do you mean, where's the bin?" The trash can. Trash can. Yeah, I think that's the typical one. Um, there's so many tomato, tomato. We speak a different language. Where's the lift? What do you mean the elevator? Elevator. Oh. 
It's like, yeah, come on, man. And it's the worst thing is, it's English, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think what happened is, is when the, the the war happened, they basically just came over and said, you know what? Let's just annoy the Brits. Let's drive on the wrong side of the road and let's just speak a different language. As you do. Yeah. As you do. How have you got on with that? Wrong, different side of the road? So, uh, so any I'm, near misses? Mm, to be fair, I've had a truck almost hit me. It's because I'm on a bike, to be fair. But yeah. I've, I've they can't had, see you, they don't know. I think for two states I rented a car because there was no coaches there it was my first couple but okay. I feel like it's driving is driving yeah. I definitely obviously veer more to the right hand side because I'm used to driving on the right hand side but on a bike it's pretty straightforward you're just in the middle of the road okay so it's, it's pretty easy so obviously you've kind of you're on the road by yourself you're meeting people for sure yeah but how is it keeping you know that mental focus obviously because you're primarily by yourself aren't you yeah so how is that so my mental focus that's a good i feel like i've got <laughs> good energy yeah in general and i think for most men nowadays it's hard to keep yourself motivated definitely and it's um it's one of the things that like gives me helps me keep keep focused is i use a little motto i say for every moment you don't you miss an opportunity that could have been and whenever i'm feeling like i can't be bothered for something or i'm not wanting to do something i just yeah. think of that and it's like a it's spare. like a red bull for my brain yeah a bit of a but spare. yeah it, it definitely kick up the ass yeah yourself. i think it can get lonely sometimes like i'm not even going to pretend like i love my own company i talk to myself often on the bike yeah in different accents all sorts to keep myself entertained but there are, <laughs> there are there are moments where i feel like I'm, when I'm riding, like the ride from LA to Idaho, where it was 14 hours, it's lonely, man. Lonely I said and hot. That, I said that to our marketing manager. I was like, that's a long, long way you know, to be on a bike. Like if you're in a car, it's still a long way, but you're yeah. in a car, but you're on the bike. And I've so. got all my gear on, boots, yeah. like Kevlar jackets, helmet. It's um, It can get lonely, but I think I know that when I meet good people, like the, the people that you meet in each state define how the state's going to be. Yeah. I know the one state that I didn't have anyone to meet, which was in Montana. I still had a great time. I ended up meeting an NFL star in the street and I cut his hair and I went to his ranch, which was bonkers. Okay. Um, but I met, I, I, you, when you meet good people, it makes it less lonely. And I think it's important to, to spend time on your own because it shows you what type of person you are. I think when you're Definitely. always... I think that's one of the things as well that I've, I've found on this trip is spending time on my own has made me realize the type of person that I actually am because you don't have any distractions like when yeah. my phone's off and all the social apps are off. ton of self-analysis, self-reflection. I'm but... an awful person, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> the, Deep down. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But it's uh, it's definitely made me realize the, the type of person that I am and, and what I want to do. And, and it, it's helped me focus in the sense sometimes you need peace and quiet yeah. to restructure it and find your bit. It definitely gets lonely and i, I think, think you're right with the peace and quiet as well because obviously these days especially with social media and just life in general it's busy 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 it's constant, you know there's man. always something to look at you know to consume we're a very consuming culture now so i think that peace and quiet element gets a bit lost sometimes oh for, for sure i think when my phone dies sometimes it's like the best time where i can where i get 20 minutes to shut off obviously yeah. i'm in the social media influence now and a, a content creator so my job is constantly being on the socials checking stuff videos it for me i never really switch off like it's been kind of nice being back in the uk where i get like a couple of days where i can just physically switch off yeah which has been definitely kind of nice. i can i can definitely get what you're saying with that mm -hmm. um what's the most interesting story that you've kind of experienced while you've been in america or that's happened to you Oh, interesting story. So there's... I know you've got a few, but what do you think is the most interesting? Okay, so something like quite cool in an interesting like story as a whole. I was in Miami. I have uh, I know someone here. His name is uh, Omar. He runs a business called The Fruit Plug. So it just so happens when I used to work for DPD, I met him during this job. Right. And it just so happens when I was in Miami, he was also okay. in Miami. And he was also in LA when I got to LA. It's like, I've seen him all over the world and it's we've never planned anything. It's just been a coincidence. And then in Miami, I met someone called Starboy and we did loads of content. So I cut his hair on the beach. Fruit, fruit plug. Fruit plug. Starboy. Starboy, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so they, they're, they're nuts names. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't even sound real, but I met these guys in America and then they ended up seeing me in Los Angeles as well. Yeah. And we shot some content together. So one of the, and that was on my porn star video, the one that's done like 7 oh, million views. Okay. Right. And then, uh, <laughs> but that, that, that was pretty, uh, that porn star one was nuts because I was on the beach. I was doing a, I'm big into like calisthenics and fitness. Yeah. And uh, I was just doing it and I was like, I asked Starboy to hold my camera for me because it's a lot easier when you've got someone holding. Usually I have a tripod set up 
and then I was like Starbucks, I was like, just hold the camera and let me just go up to someone. He just like, random. Yeah, obviously. yeah. So and we were on the beach as well. And uh he was like, nah man, let's do it later. I was like, no. I was like, for every moment you don't, you miss an opportunity that could have been. So I had that cool. in my head. I was like, no, hold my camera for me. I filmed your stuff because he's a, he's into big calisthenics and okay. stuff. And I saw this geezer on a bike coming down. It looked kind of wacky. I was just like, oh, oh, wow. I'll pull him over. So I said, excuse me, you can see this video after. But I, I said to him, can I stop you? And then as I was cutting his hair, off, before the police stopped us and they arrested me, I was like, what do you do for a living? And then he said, oh, I'm, a, I'm an OnlyFans. I'm, a, I'm one of the top porn stars in the world. <laughs> I'm and an I, OF dude. Yeah. And I was sort of thinking, I was like, you know when you think someone's talking nonsense? I was like, yeah, yeah, cool, whatever. And then he showed us and I was like, okay, wow. Well, he just, just whipped his he literally phone out, I imagine. His, it's on Twitter. So <laughs> What he, did he show you? <laughs> oh, he showed me some pretty gruesome stuff, but he showed it to me. And then I was just, I thought it was such a bonkers story. And then we were laughing after. I still speak to him. Now he texts me every so often when I was on GB News the other day. He was like, bro, I love it. Well done. Really? Da, da, da. Yeah, so he's actually really cool. But that was just a weird story that I had. I stayed with someone in um, Washington, D.C. That was an ex-army veteran. Yeah. And he was telling me about the story, how he was like caught in Afghanistan and that how he was getting shot at. And then out of all of a sudden it just stopped and they just disappeared. And I was like, what, what, what do you mean it just stopped and disappeared? They were like, everyone just it went dead silent and all the guys just went away it was so they were in the middle of a war what yeah this is this is a nut story and he was like we don't to this day we don't know what happened there was about 10 or 15 of them in their platoon and he was when he was explaining the story to me he was like there was gunfire at us and then all of a sudden the gunfire stopped and then he was like as they put their heads above like the wall there was no one there and to this day they don't know where they went and obviously they got back to their base and that was it i think that was a bonkers story so what the enemy just enemy just disappeared into thin air from from like aggressive gunfire like bombs and guns to this day he's he must have been 65 but he said 65 uh, and senile or 65 and with it i don't know he probably could have <laughs> said there was a flying saucer going across him but from what it seemed like he seemed like he was being pretty genuine and to this day he's even his wife was like no no it did happen there are multiple people in the platoon talked about it and they still don't know which i thought was kind of weird listen there's lots of conspiracy theories in yeah. america but there's been lots of i've had lots of good experiences bad experiences i know when i was at a restaurant for instance my bike obviously you've seen it it's got my name plastered all yeah. over it and some guy literally came up to me and uh he was like bro your bike's cool cut a long story short i ended up chilling at his for the night and then i went shooting with him the next day I went on his boats which was kind oh, really? of crazy. When I was in Florida, Florida's a big gun state. Oh, huge and gun state. Yeah. <laughs> I was in a place called Ginny Springs, okay. which is like a natural spring. And uh, I asked these guys to hold my GoPro for me so I could get a bit of footage because obviously I'm on my own. Yeah. And then they asked me what I did. I told them I ended up giving them all haircuts. It was one of their bachelor parties. And then they were like, oh, before you leave Florida, why don't you come to one of our farms and you can shoot guns? So I ended up shooting like 20, 30 different guns. They have never met me Just before. Just popping them off. Yeah, America's... With the man them in Lit. Ginny Springs. <laughs> they, were like, they were like, you can't film this. They call it a bump stock, which, you know, in America, you're not allowed machine guns, like fully automatic machine guns. But the way a bump stock works is when it sh fires, it bumps and it like works as an automatic machine gun. Okay. So there was loads of stuff that I couldn't film. But there was, and these, st like these stories, they would give it, they would bring out guns that like AK-47s that were illegal. Madness. It was, it was nuts. Madness. There's, Americans madness. are very hospitable in the sense that like, I, I had this preconception that when I got there, Americans were going to be super aggressive, unfriendly. But yeah. I would say... In 37 out of the 38 states, Americans have been nothing but friendly. Been nothing but friendly. Spot on. Right. Mm -hmm. 37 out of 38. So. The one state. What's the one? Oh, this story still traumatizes me. So I, I use an app called Couchsurfing to get around. Yeah. Um, which I told you about. Couchsurfing, for anyone that doesn't know, is basically an app where you can use it in every country and you can meet people that host their homes. So let's say I'm in Alabama, for instance. I will go on Alabama couch surfing. I'll see who's hosting because there's people that like to meet people. I would say they're like-minded people, travelers. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, travel is expensive. Yeah. And in in every state besides one, um, which was Montana, because I, there was no one in the city that I was looking for, I've been able to stay with people on couch surfing or like a friend of a friend. Okay. But this story was was pretty bad in the sense that I'm excited for this. Cause I, yeah, yeah, it's that I didn't put it on YouTube because I didn't want to disrespect the family, like yeah. film someone's home. But 
I had, it was my first long ride. So imagine if you've never done a one hour ride before, an hour feels long, but once you've done yeah. an hour, it gets easier. So this was my first seven hour ride. Okay, well. The longest I've done is is four hours until that point. So seven hours for me mentally feels long. Now that I've done 14 hours, seven hours feels it's like a breeze. breeze. Yeah. yeah. I'm like seven hours, nothing, no problem. And uh, I, it was raining. One of my motorbike fender pieces came off in my face while I was riding. Oh. So I, I was already having a tough time. It was late. It was Sunday and it was just cold, wet. Obviously, I've got all my gear on. You haven't seen it, but yeah. it's all my stuff is wet. I'm not happy. And uh, I get to this lady's house. Bearing in mind, to give you some context, couch surfing has a review system. Yeah. So you can see people that have stayed with them. And all of who's her... Verified who's Yeah, not. all of her reviews were verified. They were great. And I was like, okay, this place looks good. So this is in Virginia, Norfolk. And um, even though it was hospitable, just... The second, the second that I saw this house, I was like, "Oh my god, I'm in for, I'm in for a real treat here." Yeah. So I walk in with my helmet on, and I'm gonna sidetrack, digress a bit. Okay. I had COVID, and I lost my sense of tell and smell and taste for about eight months. Oh sure. And uh, I'm a big foodie, food snob, whatever you want to call it, and uh, I basically my smell and taste has never been the same. But it's it's pretty much back now. But at that time, this is sort of like March time. It wasn't the same. So I'd open this door of this house and this this waft of like damp dog crap, dog. cat crap, Ooh. wet dog. It was so strong that I almost threw up. And obviously, you know where someone smells so something so bad, it sticks to your clothes? Oof. So Into I'd, the fabric. Yeah, I had... Uh, this is one of my bad horror stories from couch surfing. Um, besides being roofied a couple of times, but that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> I've been roofied twice out there. Really? Yeah, we'll go on to that story after. Flood the L. And uh, so I walk in, I open the door and the smell hits me. And then as I'm looking on the floor, there's wet dog cat crap on the floor. Seriously. And and the, the family were like, she had told me that she had four kids and the place was messy. Like I've seen pretty messy, but this was on another level. It was so Shit bad old. that, yeah, I filmed it on my phone because I knew people wouldn't believe me. I think what makes it worse is this lady is an interpreter for the US government and she makes like 400 grand a year. She speaks 15 different languages. Okay, something... She was a, a hippie. Weird. Yeah, she was a, she was a big hippie. The, the family were a hippie, but I got there she, and I was, I was so distraught at what I'd seen. Obviously, I've been traveling. It was yeah. late. It was like 9 p.m. at this time. I was, like, oh, I was like, I can't deal with this. So I sat down. She was like, are you hungry? I hadn't eaten from 12 p.m. and it's now 9 p.m. So you're definitely hungry. So I was like, yeah, she was like, I made some mac and cheese. I was like, great. So I like ignore the, the crap, crap, dog crap, the wet dog, the, the, the house that looked like a bomb had gone off. Is it mac or cheese or crack and cheese? What? <laughs> I, you see how hard this thing is? She brought out this mac and cheese that looked like a brick. And, uh, but before she gave it to me, I watched her drop it on the floor and she picked it up with what? her hand. Yeah, so I picked it up with her, I picked it up with my hand, her hand and then gave it to me. She obviously didn't see that I, I saw this. And then I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm actually fine. I just realized I had a Chick-fil-A. Bearing in mind for anyone that doesn't know, Chick-fil-A is like a Christian company. Sunday, they're shut. shut yeah. So I hadn't eaten that day for like 24 hours. So in the morning, I like got up. This is where the story just gets so much worse. So she was like, let me give you a tour. Make worse. It gets worse. <laughs> so she was like, let me give you a tour of the house. I was like, yeah, no problem. So she took me upstairs and this bathroom that she took me in looked like something out of a horror scene. There was pee on the floor. There was there was a bit of poo on the corner. The shower looked and it was it was crazy to me because I was just I was like, how can you invite someone into your home? Yeah, like this? and it's in that state. Like, what, yeah, yeah. what, what? Like what's going on? Uh, yeah, so that that night I, after everyone left, she had guests. I went to sleep, albeit it was a very short sleep. And then in the morning, they were the daughters. She had three daughters and two sons. They were going to Comic Con. Okay. One of the the daughters uh, said, "Could you give me a lift on your bike?" And I was like, "Listen, if you've got a helmet, I don't have a problem with it. Sure." But the other daughter, I'm not sure if she was all there, but this is all oh, this. <laughs> <laughs> so she looked at me dead in the eye. She was a bit very upset that she couldn't take me, that I, I wouldn't take her because the night before she was having like a, a breakdown or something. It was it was a bit much. From bearing in mind, I've only been in there 20 minutes when this girl was having a breakdown. Okay. So the next morning she looked at me, she was really upset. And the only way I can describe it is I have to reenact it, but she looked at me dead in the eyes. She went... She what? Put, she put her hands behind her trousers. She touched her hands, sniffed it, and she went, oh, I've shit myself. And I was just bearing in mind, I've been in there like less than 12 hours. 
so uh i sat there and i'm i'm at this point i'm distraught so i was like you know what are you serious bro honestly i filmed the whole thing which i'm not going to put on but i can show you after that and and this was the typical in the most polite way american trailer trash that i had been experiencing but to this day when i tell people about this story they're like joel you're lying it's not true and then i pull out my phone and i show you this the evidence i show this series of events and people look at Bro, me like i just you know while you said that i'm just picturing it like mental image and i'm like bear in mind oh. this, this girl's like 25 years old so she, oh, okay so she's a woman she's a she's a woman woman and uh, just this whole experience, like there's there's so many, I probably say I've got 10 bad experiences and like 10 really good experiences, but the 10 bad experiences, and I, I will say for anyone that's watching this podcast and that's using couch surfing, especially women and females, that you uh, just proceed with caution and just vet whoever you go with. It's different because I'm honestly, because I'm a man and I can, the dynamic is different between people. I, yeah. I, I met someone that had been on couch surfing that, doesn't use the app anymore because she had bad experiences and there i guess you don't know what you're gonna get you have no idea you, you, you wouldn't can... expect that that's that that's not that's a bad story but that's not even like that i think that's up there with one of the worst stories but there's i've been roofied twice from couch yeah, surfing that's crazy which is that's which crazy is nuts. those are some good stories for you but yeah crazy stories <laughs> um we we'll give a shout out to is it starboy starboy yeah. and, and fruit plug and we probably and fruit plug we'll probably throw one of the clips from that video with uh, yeah, yeah. your special friend up for everybody to see yeah for sure. Excuse me, bro. Can I offer you a free trim by any chance? Okay. Yeah? Hell okay, yeah. a trim, man, a trim. Yeah. And it's free. Hell yeah. Yeah? Awesome, I got bro. You. If it's good, I'll tip you. What's your name? Andy Savage, bro. Andy Savage. Yeah. I know Andy Savage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice to meet you, man. A zero all the way, yeah? yeah? Awesome, man. Let's do it. Great, how long have you been growing your hair for? Four years. Four years? Yeah, that's pretty good. Man. Jesus, well, I'll do my best not to cut it off, yeah? Otherwise, you might not be going back to London. Bro. <laughs> Tell me, what do you do for a living? I'm a porn star, actually. You're a porn star? Wicked, man. <laughs> what made you want to get into that? If the shoe fits, you should wear it, right? If the shoe fits, you should wear it. I love that. If you're good at something, don't do it for free. Are you on, like, the main websites or you're on OnlyFans? Yeah, yeah, everywhere, man. Like, videos, number one. Oh, that's mad. On there. Pornhub, OnlyFans, everything. What's some mad experiences that you've had? Yeah, there's a couple bad stories, bro. Like, you know, f***ing weirdos trying to track your ID at that time and stuff. Oh, really? Jesus, that must be hectic, man. Yeah, that's all right. All right, Joel. So I'm treating you to one of our uh, Slick Gorilla Tropical Jungle Cheers, bro. hard seltzers. Cheers. Um, just for everybody to know, you can pick these up through Arrow Town's website. It's a collaboration we did with them to create our own hard seltzer, they call it. Um, it's a big thing in America now. It's taking mm. over the UK. So it's basically just like a sparkling light alcohol. It's quite fruity and quite nice. They, they love them in America. Mm. I think it's um, Steve will do it. Um, he's really, really big on YouTube. He's got his own brand. I think it's called Happy Dad. Um, but moving more into kind of what's happening in the world, because we spoke about Barbary and spoke a little bit about you. Spoke about my story. Yeah. All that good stuff. But I want to know your take on a few things which Hit happening me, man. right now. Um, so I think first things first, man like AJ. Anthony um, Joshua, my, got, my boy from Watford. Your boy from Watford got punched up again. He did. He got mashed. Uh, what's your thoughts? Tell us. Oh, do you know I, I i really like anthony joshua i think he's a good influence for young people i think i want to see more of the anthony joshua that's from watford i i'm not road sure man i want to see the road man yeah. he's he's not he's not a posh boy and i think he's that not. comes down to authenticity maybe because i shoot a lot of content i can see when someone's being authentic i think the, the only time we got the eight authentic aj is when he was pissed that he lost and he went in the belts and he started ranting like a madman well, yeah, you know, when he's just full of adrenaline, you know, yeah. people were saying, oh, someone should have stopped him. But I, I don't think anybody really could. That kill, he would kill them. Uh, yeah. Even the only man was probably Uzik that could have stopped him. <laughs> and he's like, go ahead. <laughs> he said, I feel, I very feel. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't even understand English properly. So he doesn't <laughs> yeah, know yeah. what AJ is saying. He's probably thinking, oh, he's apologizing for the loss or something. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he wasn't really doing that. He was just going off on one. I'm I'm upset with AJ because I know that he could have beaten him. Not easily. You but think? He, I think he could. But he, Usyk planned it. Tact, he gassed him out. So if you see, AJ got some really good hits on Usyk yeah. on round eight. And then round nine, you, round nine, 10, 11, and 12, Usyk absolutely flattened him. Yeah. With power, with speed, with stamina, yeah, exactly. pretty much everything. And I think Anthony Joshua got outclassed. And it's a shame because he, did. he is a heavy, he's supposed to be a heavyweight he champion. Did. I mean, I watched the build up, all the big, like, previous pros, legends were like, he has to go in there and just be the bigger man. Um, it should have been like a big brother versus a little brother, where the big brother's saying, you know what, no. 
Um, even though the little brother's a little bit faster, a little bit more crafty, the big brother's still just going to pound him and put mm -hmm. it on him. But AJ didn't really do that. And I think he just left it a bit late. And then strategically, Uzek was like, okay, I'm going to let you use your energy in the eighth round. 100%. And then AJ obviously went for it, got super tired. And then, yeah, he just got knocked AJ around. could have finished him within the first six if he really wanted to by being that old AJ. Yeah, being that bold fought. and caution to the wind. Yeah. I think people would have preferred that if he lost in that manner where maybe he was bold, caution to the wind, but actually got clipped and knocked out. He, uh, I want to see the Anthony Joshua that fought Dillian White. Yeah, that's, I think the, that's the one Joshua that everybody that wants to see. It was, it was that, that guy. That, that was that was when Anthony Joshua was still up and coming. He was still aggressive, and he was confident enough to be like, you know what, I've got nothing on the line here. I'm just going to fight you and just be the man. Yeah, and just throw throw it all out there. Hundred um, percent. So, what do you think is next for him? Um, I think Anthony Joshua needs to take some fights that are going to show that he's still a good fighter. Yeah. Otherwise, he's going to fall off a bit like jo Joseph Parker and Andy Ruiz. And um, Andy Ruiz is true. Yeah, he's and and do you know what? Andy Ru respect him for winning. He got yeah. he he outclassed AJ, but Andy Ruiz let the fame go to his head. Anthony let Joshua, the money go to his head. Yeah, well. of course, man. He made a lot of money from that. I think Anthony Joshua needs to take some good fights. To be honest, after seeing how he fought, Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury would both whoop him easily. I think yeah. I want to see Anthony Joshua fight some people that may. He, I want to see him fight Dillian White again, man. Yeah, I think because I I, I, Dillian White's a bit more. He's he's figured out his class a little bit more. I think he's coming to himself. He's more refined now. I think a million percent more refined. I think AJ needs to be fighting a bit more consistently. Yeah. Not so much bigger gaps. I like that when AJ was coming up, he was having a fight like once every two or three months. Yeah. That's what he should be doing. He wants to be should but be an active fighter. The only thing I would say about that is I feel they would just pick and choose in saying who who should we get AJ to run through next? You know who doesn't really stack up to him? Yeah. Because there was a lot of, you know, I think Carlos Takam and then there's, I think, Charles Martin, just guys that you know he's going to beat easily. I'd want him to see him fighting, you know, someone known like Joe Joyce. You yeah, know. Joe, that, any any of those boys that are going to give him a proper challenge. Yeah. That's what he needs. He can't, you no can't belts, go No belts, no nothing, just... He's, he, to be fair, fair play to him. He has fought a lot of great fighters and I think he needs to continue fighting on great fighters. Yeah. And you can't, he shouldn't He shouldn't stray away from an, a hard challenge because he's had two losses. And I think a lot of men's defeat can come from their, their greatest challenge and then they can become very strong again. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, we'll see. I think the next kind of six months are really important in the guy's career. Um, just to see what route he goes down. Um, I think some people have said, you know, he might as well retire now. No, 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 no. Um, he is I, rich enough to retire now, but yeah, he, he but I think to. he can now look at things with more of a perspective. It's not really about money anymore. Um, it's about you know what do I want to do. I think those know? belts are a distraction for him. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And I think sometimes the paycheck is a distraction as well. Look at Conor McGregor. I rate him as a fighter, but he made so much money. He's lost the fire in his belly. Yeah. AJ's yeah. like as much as he's great, he's lost the fire. But the only thing with Obviously, UFC is, we know, well, it's come to fruition that everybody knows the pay is super low for the fighters. Except for Conor McGregor. Apart from McGregor, because he's, you know, the special one. Yeah, yeah, of course, um, but fair, fair play to him. But if you look at most fighters, they have never lost their fight. Even when Conor McGregor loses, people want to watch him because he's just so arrogant, obnoxious. Yeah. He's, a, he's a great showman, man. That build up to the, when he had that fight with Khabib and that whole kind of when he threw the thing at the coach and <laughs> that was insane. I've got to give it to Conor McGregor because he... he he does back up what he fronts. Yeah, yeah. Um, he has lost, uh, which is part, part of the game. He don't even care though. He's he's so crazy that it doesn't matter if he yeah. loses a hundred fights. He's still like I'm the best. I don't care. And I know now he's putting a lot of a lot of muscle on. Size. So is we'll he fighting see. again? Uh, it's not been announced, but I imagine it's on the cards. He did break his leg, so you've got to give the guy a little bit of time. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I would like to see him fight. Obviously, um, I think this weekend just gone. Man like Leon Edwards mm -hmm. um, got the W. Obviously, he's re representing the UK. That was um, a crazy so, knockout. Yeah, shout out to him. Um, I, w I watched the fight afterwards on the highlights. He stayed in there. Um, he didn't let that Usman guy dominate him too much, even though it looked that way. And then, yeah, he stayed in it. So, it was clean. It was a good fight. Yeah, and head kick. Boom. Boom, KO. Um, so yeah, shout out to Leon, uh, is it Edwards? Leon Edwards. Mm -hmm. um, and then also Paddy, um, who reps Slick Gorilla. Uh, he should be fighting soon. Haven't Paddy's a great fight. Pa Paddy's, Paddy's like going to be the next Conor McGregor. Yeah. Because uh, do you know why he gets so much attention? People think his hair's nuts. He looks, you look at the guy, you Paddy, think and you think, fight. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't know what to think. You kind of have to take a moment and like register what should I think here. I think he's going to be very popular. Yeah. I mean, he already is. The guy's pretty much a global star mm. at the moment. Um, obviously, there's more fights to come. Um, he's on a good win streak. 
Um, so I think everybody's really excited to see what Definitely. happens with Paddy and also um, Molly as well because they're from the same gym. Um, I can't remember her last name, but uh, she's always fighting on his card as well. Um, she's really, really good. Um, but yeah, if you had to choose boxing or UFC. I enjoy UFC because it's a different craft, although there is a something very, there's a reason boxing is the most popular, but for me it's boxing because there's a, there's an art to it. Not only are you there eyeing is. up, not only are you eyeing up your opponent, but the whole slipping technique, whereas UFC, you can use knees, elbows, like it's, it's, you're basically brawling without yeah. hitting them in the, in the nuts. Yeah, basically. Pretty much. Obviously, um, I think it's Eubank Jr., Conor Ben. They're going to fight. So that's uh, something that's been going for, I think, what, 30 years since yeah. their fathers fought, which happened twice. To be honest, I... What I, do you think? I, I, Eubank Jr. is not that great. Okay. Like, and to, But you know, the thing is, I just love watching his dad. His dad is the, fu <laughs> his dad is the funniest his, person yeah. to watch. His the, dad The light here legend. is stupendous. Just like he, I think what he's done is he's found a thesaurus and he's just used a couple of different words. Yeah. So watching the, I just enjoy watching Chris Eubank, his dad. Yeah, um, he's I'm a not, I'm not sure who's going to win that fight. I think I've watched a couple of Chris Eubank Jr.'s uh, fights. He's very fast, but he lacks power. Do you think? I think so. Because I saw him with a fight with, um, I think, James DeGale. Yeah. And he was just knocking him around for fun. Who was the guy that he fought before that? Um, I think he fought Liam Smith in Cardiff. There was someone that he, he fought where he was throwing him. yeah, he was throwing a lot of punches. I think George he, Groves. Yeah, yeah, George Groves. That's the one lost his hat. Yeah, so yeah. the George... and. To be fair, George just looked like he was taking. He was like, "Yeah, whatever." He was a tough guy, though, George Groves. Yeah, when he was sick, fighting. sick fighter. He was tough, tough, tough. I remember him and um, I think it's Carl Froch had some proper, proper yeah. tear ups where it was like, I was like, "Whoa." He's quite. He's very humble though. Like uh, out of all the um the fights I've seen, he's like, "Listen, I'm going to beat you," but he's never done it in an aggressive manner. Yeah, I think his dad's fair. his dad's brought him up well to be humble about his losses yeah. and wins, and I think. I think it's important for all fighters to have a loss because it will show what type of man they are to win, come back from it. I think this loss, backtracking to Anthony Joshua, I think it's going to be good for him, man. I think we yeah. might finally see the Anthony Joshua that we deserve. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Like mm -hmm. I said, the next six months, they're really, really important for AJ. But shout Definitely. out to him, obviously. Sport, good, it's all good, about taking part, yeah. even if you get bruised up. It's good luck to both of them, Fair man. Play. That's the one sport you can't play. You fight boxing is, and kickboxing and, and UFC. You can never play it. You are literally fighting. So yeah. respect to anyone that gets your, inside the ring. You're putting yourself ring. on the line. 100%. Um, on to someone else who's put themselves on the line recently. Okay. Another male figure out there. Okay. Uh, more that? in the social media world. Yeah. Uh, can you guess who I'm on about? I just know this is going to be a loaded question. Yeah, it starts with a T. Andrew <laughs> Tate, huh? Yeah, Tate himself. Talk to me about your thoughts on Tate. My thoughts on Tate so the most controversial man on the internet well was on the internet he's still there he's on tiktok he's uh <laughs> they might have cancelled his instagram and facebook and youtube my thoughts on tate <clears throat> this is an interesting one i think for anyone that actually has watched andrew's long form content yeah they will know that the things that are being portrayed about him are very untrue and uh, I'm a big advocate for getting all of the facts because there's your side, their side, yeah. and then there's the truth. There's always three sides to a story. And I think it's important to educate, for everyone to educate um, themselves on and a person. And what the context is. What's of course. On. At the end of the day, Andrew is uh, is not making these TikTok accounts where th they can take a clip that's 10, 15 seconds long and they can chop it into whichever manner of way. I, I know, I, Before I did uh, the GB News, I was on a show called Rich House, Poor House, okay. where I know that they could literally take a segment of a minute clip and they can put you in a complete, completely different light to what's actually being said. Yeah. So my views on Andrew Tate is that I respect the man for his success as a man to be successful, to have the drive, charisma and passion to be successful, to be a multimillionaire is extremely difficult. Mm. Um, I think the way that he's been painted on the internet is not great albeit to his own uh, dis dis his own credit of being super successful, yeah. the rise and fall really. So I respect him of what he does, what he says. Oh, not everything I agree with what he says. I can understand as someone that's in the influence of the social media, he says things to antagonize people, to get himself known. Yeah, to get a reaction. Controversy, and Andrew, yeah, Andrew's main message for anyone that is watching is that men and women are different. 
men need to work hard they need to be courageous they need to be strong they need to be the type of man that can protect their partner and he says that women are unique and they should be protected we should look after them pay for their bills make sure they're provided for and if you look at his main message about that men and women are not equal men and women should be paid the same should have equal rights but when it comes down to our anatomy and how we interact with one another it's we are we're, we're very different and i think people calling him a misogynist and saying oh he doesn't respect women i think you have to take it with a pinch of salt to say listen he's saying something to antagonize you but he's also he's also inspiring a lot of men like i know lots of young men that look at his videos that say okay the internet isn't the real world i need to work hard i need to strive for greatness also to andrew tate's when he talks about controversial stuff like it's not cheating it's exercise and when he's talking about high class men he's talking about the one percent of the population yeah, the one percent of the one percent the one percent of the one percent and listen i hope that any man watching this can be that one percent that should strive for greatness uh, i don't think it's right that they um that they counseled him off and i think it's making his point more prevalent that what he's saying is true because when they counsel someone it's usually because they're saying things that other people don't want them to hear yeah, I mean, it is a tricky one because there's so much that, you know, he said. I think a lot of the time he did it, you know, to get that controversy, to stir the pot, you know, and that's what trends on social, isn't it? But yeah. I think you're right. People, they do need to look at the full picture. Um, For instance, I'll give you an example, just something, because I, I, I obviously have to spend a lot of time on social media. Yeah. There was a video of him going around of him hitting a woman where she was like, no, stop, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And tiktok cuts it as her crying and that's it there's another guy what's his name his name is daz that did like a hate video on andrew and he cut that video of just him hitting but then not even three minutes later when you see the entire clip she basically says are you going to hit me properly this time and he says last time i hit you i got banned on the internet and the news think i'm a woman beater she was like well she goes if you did it properly you wouldn't be called a woman beater so that that section of the clip completely changes yeah. the narrative she yeah. On, on it which i think is is sad for him so the research that i've done is that listen i'm not saying andrew is a perfect man i'm not saying that he hasn't antagonized but do i think he's a misogynist do i think he should be cancelled no i think he actually is very good for lots of young men to inspire them to strive for absolute greatness you know what there's an interesting part about him is you know he was on big brother mm -hmm. so you know when i learned that i was like okay that's a bit interesting so i'm thinking you know has he always wanted to get his face there and be that star and because obviously you're going on big brother it's kind of for your face to be seen isn't it i think he understands especially and i understand it as well and it didn't work well for him on big brother as well well they removed him from big brother yeah. from my understanding and i could be wrong I'm, I'm always happy to admit that i'm wrong but they removed him from big brother because a couple of the people were trying to start a fight with him yeah and obviously andrew is a, a professional kickboxer, kickboxer yeah. so it's like saying they were they were worried for the safety of the other people not yeah. him um but yeah that's... i heard that as well i don't know if that's the 100 percent truth because mm -hmm. as with anything you just don't know like, that's the biggest problem now i think with social media you know you go on tiktok yeah, sure. you, you hear so many different things you don't know what's the truth and what's not because you know the first video i get that pops up on my feed is like oh you should be an amazon fba seller you know i'm doing ten thousand dollars on that amazon <laughs> yeah, MPA. it's fake and i'm like first of all i don't need to know this i don't care Second of all, where's the proof? You know what I mean? There's, yeah. You can say anything you want on there and there's no validation. There's no like references. There's no checks. There's nothing. I think it's super dangerous, especially for the younger people who are a bit more impressionable, who would, you know, maybe just believe a lot of this stuff they hear. Yeah, well, I think Andrew, obviously on your big brother point, I just have to extrapolate what you said, <laughs> <laughs> that Andrew understands that life comes easier with status yeah. and men we desire status yeah so if for for women when they want their man to be more successful how can you make your man look like his status is higher i think he understands that in the day that we live status it means a lot yeah it has some clout to it definitely 100 percent, man he, he gets that uh foremost what do you think about only fans obviously the guy that you met out in Miami was Mr. OnlyFans. What do you think of that now? Because obviously that ties very much into social media. What do I think of OnlyFans? I think we're moving into a an unprecedent, unprecedented time of um, human history where everything is so easily accessible with a click. Mm. Um, my thoughts on OnlyFans is I have pros and cons like I do with anything. Yeah. I think 
the majority of OnlyFans is obviously porn. Let's not let's not get into it. Ninety nine point nine nine percent. Yeah, and uh, there was a video of the OnlyFans, the guy that owns OnlyFans. He was like, "Let's remove everyone," and then he didn't realize so much of the percentage. He's actually is porn. from the UK as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I? I think. Listen, I think it's great. Um, I also think it's not great because porn really i'm not a porn man myself straight up i don't really watch porn i think it dilutes your mind it, it separates Neither you am I. I feel like i need yeah. to say it otherwise yeah, yeah, people yeah, thinking, yeah. Oh, he hasn't said anything he's definitely a porn I'm, guy I'd, I'd be lying if i said <laughs> i've never watched porn of course that oh, is complete laugh. that's complete yeah. bullshit but the the truth is is that i don't watch porn because i know it's it's not real and i think imagine you've got like you said kids are very impressionable nowadays imagine Super. you've got 12 13 year old like i remember talking to my cousin about it like when they had to watch porn back they had to plug it in the vcr rewind it make sure it was back in the same place so their parents yeah it's a lot of effort whereas now it's it's one click, click away button, yeah. i think only fans is is great because it's helping lots of women create lots of income revenue and women understand in the most polite way p is power <laughs> straight up that's the truth and yeah. um the, sadly that's the it, truth it, the, as, as much as people don't want to admit it women understand that they 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 hold a power over men and um the my my view on it is that it's great but i i'm not i would never be on OnlyFans myself because and i don't think i could ever date someone that was on OnlyFans because it sort of leaves that point of like if you're showing all of that to everyone yeah what, what is else, left what's for me left, yeah and i think there's no value to it no it's not even value and i think there's when intimacy intimacy is such a big thing and if a woman is showing everything on the internet for just every man to pay it sort of it makes me think in my own personal opinion is there anything left for me besides maybe emotional spirituality or whatever it may be and, and it makes me think it's funny i was having this conversation with a chick the other day i was saying she was thinking about it and i was like well as your boyfriend, would he be happy with it? Would you be happy with your boyfriend yeah, doing that? Yeah, she was on the other foot. Yeah, doing that with women. And I think just in my own personal experience, I think some things should be left private for one-on-one. -on -one. There is, a, there is of course, a big business for it. But in my own personal opinion, I think OnlyFans is a great platform, but you also, you're, you're, you're selling your soul a little bit. Yeah, I agree with you there, especially selling the soul. Mm. Um, obviously, it's every individual's choice, isn't it? Of course. Um, listen, I would never, I would never hate or in the mo in another way, I would never shit on anyone that does OnlyFans. It's your business. I rate it. I respect anyone that is filming content. Bear in mind, OnlyFans is difficult. Like to be able to one of the top creators, you might see on TikTok, what's her name? Ellie, that was fighting that other girl. But oh she, yeah. Yeah. She, she's, she, she's about. Yeah, she does super well. Listen, I rate it that they're driving Lambos and they're enjoying life. But you've got to remember, muscle. like uh, coming back to Andrew, these are the one point one percent of people yeah. that do super well you don't see all the other people that don't do well that sell themselves and they get nothing back in return yeah, that's true so now obviously a big time content creator like you are i'm i'm very small uh, man i'm i'm hopefully one day how's the dms you know anybody creeping in anything interesting how are my dms my dms are weird <laughs> man there's a i think uh, being on gb news there was a, a a big influx i've been on tv once before there was a couple of weird people i get male female i think i'm not gay myself but i must attract i must have a gay vibe because gay men come to me all the time fair enough flattery yeah listen it's that i have had some really like weird requests where someone came into my dm and they were like hey joel i saw you on tv i thought it'd be good if i could message you I'd, i i wanted to know if you would donate one of your organs to me and it was just the, the weirdest okay. set the weirdest set of messages that were coming through that's uh that's a little bit odd so strange they're like odd. you look healthy can i have a can i could i ask for a liver i was like what just I mean, even looking at it it was just strange at least they dropped a compliment in there yeah you look healthy but yeah that's, sure. that's a little bit weird it's for sure. um let me ask you if you weren't a barber mm. what do you think you'd be doing i think the only other thing i know is to i'd be back in property man yeah i uh listen i don't think i could bring myself to do it because I really was sad when I was doing it. And I think for anyone listening now is just try as many things as you can. That yeah, you've got to find what you're passionate about. Give, right? give you fulfillment and passionate. Yeah. But then again, I think I would go on a journey of just trying a whole bunch of stuff. Like before I ended up doing property or before I ended up being a barber or content creator, the merge of both, yeah. is I tried loads of different stuff. things. Just as many jobs as you can try, like 30, we're, we're programmed in our brain to think 30 is is old is set yeah things should Never, be set no ways man like i know people that are 55 that are yeah. only just finding their passion and then become multi-millionaires within a year I because think, they yeah, love what they do to be honest because i'm 
I'm getting of age now, let's say. Um, You're turning 18. <laughs> <laughs> Double that. Um, yeah, I found and I've come to get the recollection and, and thought that, you know, your best opportunity to actually start something is probably towards your 40s. Um, because your mind has matured and you can see things from a different outlook. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think especially now 30 is is a young 30. I think 30 is much younger than what 30 was, let's say, 15 years ago. For sure. Um, so to anybody out there who's still not set on what they're doing, I think you still have time. Man. Don't worry, man. Yeah, you still have time. I think, like what you said, experiment with different Bro, stuff. I did, like, and, and I think it comes back to the point when you asked me what I did. Like, in a, I, I'm going to try to say it in the most humble way I know because I'm not trying to be arrogant, but I was earning like six, close to seven figures. Yeah. And I took it all away. And like, as a 21-year-old, that's a lot of money to be earning. Yeah. And it comes down to the point that I knew in my heart that it was the wrong decision for me because it wasn't fulfilling me. And and money isn't everything. You will probably look, because you're not really happy with what you're doing, but you are taking in a decent amount of money. You'll sure. probably waste it. You probably ended up pissing up the wall. Oh, I just, I was spending it on dumb shit. Yeah, exactly. Honestly. Because you're trying to make yourself happy through other means. Materi materialistic stuff will only get you so, so far. far. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I think in, and I'm, I'm generalizing here for most people, you need to enjoy what you do because money is a byproduct of what you enjoy doing. It's come, it's as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with that one, but you are a barber. Um, nevertheless. Mm -hmm. So if you were to pick one person out there, let's say famous person to cut their hair, who would it be? Famous? Yeah. Uh, like famous, famous or famous barber? Um, actual, it can be whoever. I'm, listen, I'm not even going to admit, I'm going to say it here. Yeah, I've been a believer since day one. Oh, really? I rate Justin Bieber, Justin. man. He is a, uh, and, and you know, people give him a lot of crap. Like the man's, the, he was on YouTube, he became famous. But the fact is like, he is very talented. He's like, I think a, so, yeah. A mod, he can play every instrument. He can sing, he can dance. I'd love to just sit down and talk to Justin Bieber just about his life, man. It seems so hectic yeah. being pulled into Imagine any YouTube person that sings on YouTube being pulled out and they become the most famous person in the entire yeah, from, world. Yeah, from young as well. From I think what, he started, 14? what, he sent something to Usher or something on YouTube? Nuts, man. He's, yeah. been, uh, he's, been, in the, he's been in the social media eye from for a long time. Age, 100%. And I think he's had his little little downs and his ups as well. Um, but I do rate him. Obviously, it's not my really flavour of yeah. music, but I, as a talent, mm. I think he's... Justin he's Bieber genuinely. and Conor McGregor. And uh, just because he's McGregor. just because he's nuts, man. I think just speaking, even like spending time with him and see, because for me, I'd also like to see like people that are really successful. Like, what what is it that made you so successful? Yeah, yeah. And I think most important with famous people, we have to remember they they're people at the end of the day as well. So but they've all. I don't got, I don't get starstruck though. That's the one thing you know when people go lose their fucking mind that they've met someone that's yeah. super famous like. I know when I'm, I've met famous people, I'll go up to them. I met Will Smith um, once in LA. This is like going back. I went up to him. This is at a young age. I was like, will I really wait, rate what you do? It was nice to meet you. And they respect you so much more than going, ah, can I have a picture type, yeah, type thing? Yeah, yeah. I think you have to remember everybody's a person at the end people. of the day. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's got their own problems, you know, their own ups and downs. Definitely, um, man. So yeah, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to ask you some quick fire questions. Quick fire okay. questions, yeah. So... Nice I'm ready, easy. I'm ready. I need to see. So this you just one. need to pick one or the other. Okay. So we'll start off with UK or US? UK. I like that. Uh, Vegas or Ibiza? Vegas. Pizza or curry? Pizza. Stella or Heineken? Stella, always. <laughs> <laughs> life without sex or life without food? I'm not answering it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not answering it. I need both, man. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Insta or TikTok? Uh, Instagram. Ooh controversial wow. TikTok, uh, TikTok is is screwing with our minds it's, it's I've noticed it with myself I can never watch something more than like 20 seconds I'm even trying to skip Netflix now so I've, really? I've had to pull myself off TikTok. my attention span is not the same after yeah. TikTok whereas Instagram is doing the same but it's a bit more slow paced, slow -paced yeah, I think yeah. TikTok we digress game. Um, summer or winter summer always yeah me too night in or night out uh, night out blondes or brunettes both <laughs> Boxing or football? I know the answer to this. Boxing, boxing. boxing. Um, early bird or night owl? I am both. Interesting. Both. Nice. Uh, love or money? Combination of both. Ooh. But you know from my story, it's love now. Yeah. It used to be money. Yeah, it's definitely love. Drake or Kanye? Uh, mm, Drake. Drake. Okay. Tupac or Biggie? Biggie. House or hip hop? House always. Um, slick gorilla or slick gorilla? 
Uh, neither. <laughs> <laughs> He's Sli- joking. Slick gorilla, guys. Slick gorilla. Get him out of here. <laughs> always, always. <laughs> cool. Um, let me ask you, what would you tell to a younger version of yourself? Are you stealing my questions, yeah? Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> yeah, because I knew that was one of yours. It's right in there. What would I tell the younger version of myself? I would say, be true to yourself. Don't be scared about getting bullied, because I used to be bullied in school. Um, so, I, I, short backstory, I used to do YouTube when I was like, 12 13 okay and i got picked on a lot of school oh really and i stopped doing it um because i didn't want to get picked on and i'm not the tallest lad in the world now but imagine i was like super short i had braces like i was really skinny i couldn't defend myself this is before so I it's thought, stacked up against you a little bit yeah the, the odds were stacked up and I, I felt like just doing youtube and people laughing at me i, I couldn't take all of it mm. i think now being older i've found some mental resilience to i don't actually care what anyone thinks about me anymore so i'm just going to do me and as long as i'm happy that's all that matters so i would tell myself um well i've done it but try as many things as you can until you find something that you absolutely love because when you love it it doesn't feel like work anymore. Yeah, definitely. I agree and with that. Yeah, just keep be be true to yourself. Be 100% authentic and don't chase or don't try be the big man. I used to have small man syndrome 100% where I was trying to like be someone I wasn't. But now I'm at that age now. And I think this is from the age of 21 where it's gone. And I just, I'm very humble. I don't need to have all the bling jewelry, nice watches. Yeah. I'm just myself. You either take that or you don't. Yeah, you do you. Yeah, man. What do you think the next five years looks like for you? Next five years, I um, even though I, I, I do believe money is not everything, I, I would like to be a multimillionaire okay. and I would like to, I believe that money is a byproduct. Money just enhances who you are. So if you're a prick without money, you're a prick with money. And I think before- <laughs> It's a good way to put it. Man, I, I, before I was, when I had money, I, I was a bit of an arsehole. I, I'm not even going to lie. Um, I think now I've, I've become more humble. I've found true, like spending time riding that bike has, has made me realize who I am. Yeah. I think money allows you to have choice. So I would love to see myself. I feel like I'm, I should be in the social media. Eye. I feel like I'm good on, good on camera. I'm trying to say it's humbly, you know, but I feel like I'm, I'm good in front of camera and I, yeah. I like making people laugh and smile. Um, whether that be on a TV show or in the social media, eye, I feel like that is definitely my path where I want to still be involved I think in, definitely if in you can camera. Know your strengths. Definitely. You know, that can always be a positive thing. I, 100%, I, I believe man. that. Um, okay, cool. So we'll come back in five years. Five years. And we'll do a little review. It'll be the world's best barber, yeah. most likely. Okay, that's the a big, big, the, big aim. The, the biggest barber. I feel like I, if, I feel like with the right um, platform, I feel like I'll be bigger than Vic because I think I'm more authentic than okay. Vic. I want to know, obviously a lot of people, especially nowadays, aspire to be a content creator. They want to be on social media. You know, they want to grow their following. Yeah. Um, influencer although sure. i do think that's kind of fizzling out a little bit it's going more towards content creators what advice would you give to those guys about wanting to be a content creator yeah so i think i've been very fortunate that i've had a content creator around me his name is simon wilson you ever see the geezer that snuck into the Conor McGregor simon fight? wilson i've been watching him from day one you know so simon day wilson one. did you ever see jason that created his challenge of throwing the darts onto his America He's challenge. guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Jason is my first cousin. Oh, really? He's also the guy that came up with the idea for my cutting through America. Right. He's the one that came up with a lot of the ideas for Simon's content. I didn't even know that because I've been following genuinely that guy from yeah. day one. Simon's my boy. Like one point challenge. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, doing the McDonald's thing. Yeah, yeah. Because um, he did the whole of America. So he, yeah, he came across it with the darts. That's yeah. how he got across. So that idea came from my cousin, Jason. Simon is a very good friend of mine. He also used to work in property. I knew him before he had a penny so when he was fighting me in my uh my flat for sweet potato chips like i've known simon before he had a penny okay. and now that he's got lots like he he gives it out and he's very he's very humble he's the same person that you meet so simon's massive view is you got to do what you love and you got to be 100 percent authentic so for any new content creator out there number one you need to find your niche what is it that you enjoy doing and what is it that you want to do and then once you do that run with it and I think it's taken me a little bit of time. If you look at my first videos, on, they were food reviews. And then I did a DPD thing and then an Amazon thing. And I tried a whole bunch of stuff before I figured out what I wanted to do. And for anyone out there, young, old, it's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to fail it because your yeah, failures definitely. are what create you. And anyone that is scared of falling or failing, if you look at anyone that is at the top, they failed a thousand times. Controversial point. I know people don't like Donald Trump and that he's got loads of like bad businesses, but that man has failed a lot. Andrew Tate's failed a lot. Anyone, Bill Gates, 
um, Jeff Bezos, any of these boys that are at the top. Failure yeah. is an important, especially for men, it's important to failure and it's okay to be upset with it. You just have to pick yourself up and get back out yeah, there. Yeah, I think there's nothing worse than, you know, saying later on in life, oh, I wish I would have tried X or I wish I would have tried Z. Um, 100%. I think it's just important, you know. Just do you, man. Just, just, yeah, to just give try it, a go. it out there. Even if it's a, a small idea, a silly one, you know, I will just say, though, a caveat to that is for people out there, don't be a sheep and don't start doing TikTok dances because you think it's going to get you views because at the end of it, you're going to look at it and feel like you've mugged yourself off. Just do something that you actually enjoy. Yeah. Don't don't be a sheep. That's yeah. what I will say. Don't follow the herd. 100%. Um, be a pilot, not a passenger. Um, that's mi- that's you're, my you're, one. It's, it's your train and you, people can get on and go, get off, but you need to know that you're at least going in the right direction. And sometimes on your train, there's going to be things that get you off track you need to figure out how to veer back on track yeah definitely all right let the people know obviously how they can follow you keep up with your journey as well sure so for everyone that doesn't know already my name is joel ezekiel i'm a north london uh, barber so if you want to follow me on tiktok my tiktok is joel a ezekiel uh my youtube my facebook pretty much everything is just joel ezekiel it's j-o-e-l Ezekiel, which is E Z E K I E L, and it'd be great if you could give me a follow, share my content, help me grow. Um, yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Everybody, give Joel a follow and follow Slick Gorilla, man. That's why you're here. Yeah, obviously, that goes without saying. Uh, drop Slick Gorilla follow. Um, we'll put all Joel's social handles, obviously, in the captions and the comments down below. Um, Joel, give us a nomination. Who should we have on the podcast next? You need someone kind of wacky on the podcast. That woman from America. <laughs> that woman from America <laughs> might trash this place. Who should I have on? A, so you obviously guys, you, you you deal with fighters, with barbers, and you deal with people that are in the industry. I think it'd be good to get someone on the complete opposite spectrum to yeah. where I am. So I would say that's a fighter. Yeah. So you guys obviously have got Paddy here, man. And Paddy's a, a big, big prosper for men's mental health. And I think that'd be massive to that get Paddy true. here. That's um, true. Yeah, obviously we're a big fan of, fan of Paddy. Um, mm-hmm. We've worked with him uh, in the past. He's a brand ambassador for us currently. Um, he is a big advocate for mental health, especially after their speech on his last fight, uh, which was, I think, really empowering um, just mm-hmm. for men across the board. And it kind of brought back the mental health conversation to the forefront um so yeah we'd love to have him on um so we'll see if we can sort that out um but yeah we want to mix up our podcast to have different guests you know you need grant grant cardone on here oh that is charlatan no yeah i'm not sure we allow charlatans on the podcast (laughs) it's all about authenticity uh we take tate though yeah tate Tate i think i think tate is gonna it's gone into hiding a little bit now yeah he'll resurface he'll resurface listen straight straight up i I rate tate i rate him for what he's done i rate him for his hard work i rate anyone that's willing to put themselves on the line there yeah and he is do you know what he's 100 percent authentic yeah i think you need someone that's on the opposite spectrum so a fighter maybe even someone that is not maybe in the social media eye just yeah we definitely want to mix it up so obviously barbers these drinks um, are banging by the way you like that yeah, yeah, yeah man they're good, they're, bro, they're good. There's, there's more in the came yeah. from there's I'll, more. I'll be honest if it was if it was dead i would have been like no nah, no nah, it's no good but i'm actually enjoying it i've almost finished it it is decent um anybody who wants to try the drinks head over to arrow town i think there's still a few cases left in stock what about ksi on here that'd be cool ksi would be sick but ksi would be sick money as well yeah yeah, yeah. Um, he's doing big big things with the whole prime situation him and logan paul yeah yeah, but we are going to mix it up. So different barbers, different hair personalities. Well, it's like anything. You start off, start off small and you work your way up, right? Yeah, we'll just do Start off with stuff. baby Joel over here. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I think we're lucky, obviously, because you're heading to Italy back, tomorrow. Italy tomorrow. Back to the USA. The so US we definitely wanted trip. to to pin you down and get this mm. done um, because I think you pretty much the perfect first guest for us. Thank you, man. Um, so so I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thanks I for the time. I appreciate you coming down 100%. Um, and then, yeah, everybody, on, make sure you subscribe because um, there will be more podcasts to come. Different guests, as I mentioned, um, hair personalities, social media characters, um, content creators, maybe a few fighters uh, like Joel mentioned, but we'll definitely mix it up. Um, give us some comments down below for anything that you'd like to see in the podcast as well. Uh, and we'll see you on the next one. Uh, once again, thanks very much, Joel. Peace, man. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Cheers, guys.